Hi guys! In today's video I want to talk about a topic which I recently saw in a video of Will Browser and he was talking about all in one inverters and, and about some basic rules how you should handle those inverters so that you are not getting shocked on um, the PV input while you have connected and running the inverter and you are not expecting to have uh, any voltages there. So this is an issue which comes up when we are talking about transformerless uh, inverter designs. We have already touched that, that subject in the video about the type B RCDs, but this is something uncommon in the United States. So that's why this kind of came up from there. And immediately after he has shown his video, I also got questions on my channel about this and how we should now uh, ground our PV system so that we are not killing ourselves on it. But all this is kind of explained already in all my videos and I always say keep your DC side isolated whenever you can. So what does it mean keep your DC side isolated? You don't want to ground a power line. Neither is it is the plus line or the minus line. None of these should be permanently grounded. Why is isolation important? Well, whenever a system is isolated and you are touching one of the power lines, you cannot get shocked while standing on the ground and touching only one of the power lines because there is no circuit via the ground which can then be closed by your body. So why is that important on the DC side and on the AC side we're doing something completely different. There we want to ground stuff. The reason is because on the AC side with all our appliances we want to cover for faults and leakages through appliances and then also leakages through our human bodies if we come into contact with faulty equipment. So that's why AC side we want to have grounding and DC side we want to maintain isolation. Why is it easy to maintain isolation on the DC side? Because we only have two components there. We have the power source which are the the solar panels, the PV panels, and we only have one device which is taking away that power. So it can be a, a charge controller if you have a battery inverter or just an MPPT controller when you have a grid tight inverter for example. And those two components are connected by a pair of wires and that's already it. So it's quite easy to maintain isolation. Now there are some equipment manufacturers who are designing a whole microcosm of different devices around their systems and those might actually demand a grounding of a power line by writing it inside the manual and the reason for that could be that all those different devices want to communicate somehow with each other and they can do that via the power line if they have a common ground. But this would be explicitly written in the manual. And even then, if you are not using the set of different devices of that manufacturer, if you are just using the inverter for example, but not a charge controller, not a smart shunt or whatever they have, then you could still actually keep your DC side isolated and see if it works without it because this is still a safety feature you want, do not want to miss if it is possible to keep it right. So transformerless inverters you have an internal pass between AC and DC side which is not disrupted Leakage currents from either of those sides can go to the other one and you can measure it on the other side and you could also come in contact with either AC on the DC side or DC on the AC side. In the 230 volt world 
we can counteract this by using a type BRCD. So if there is a leakage on the DC side on the PV array, the system can also detect this on the AC side and be deactivated via RCD. And that's all what is there. There's nothing special to do with this transformerless uh, inverter settings. The PV side must be isolated. The only thing which is connecting a power line towards ground would be a SPD. And this only for a very short amount of time. If you have a surge on the DC power line due to a lightning strike somewhere around you, and this would then just be uh, funneled through the SPD towards the ground and then the SPD will again disconnect the connection and that was it. In the case of a faulty panel when you have a leakage between the power line and the frame and the frames they are grounded of course if you have this leakage towards the ground if you have installed a type B RCD the RCD should trip but also Internally, the inverter should detect such a leakage and should also present you with a fault and shut down normally. So always keep your PV DC side isolated if you can. And this is all the trick about it. I will show you now on my uh, setting here on my all-in-one inverter how a measurement would look like and how you could find out if your inverter is transformer based or if it is transformerless. Going to make some measurements here on the running system, right? So when Will was talking about this problem, he was showing it on the inverter. So connected AC and the battery, of course, the system is running, is on. What will you see on a non-active PV input? So in order to show you this, I will not show it on the inverter because I don't, I don't want to uh, unscrew this cover here. I will show you this on the uh, distribution here. I will make the measurements, take the measurements directly at the DC input breaker. So by finally opening the breaker, we can take measurements as it would be uh, similar to the terminals on the inverter. And here also have the ground. So we will make measurements. Look what happens if we t uh, shut down the PV array, remove the PV array. What kind of voltages can we still see on the PV input coming from the inverter? Okay, so this is my PV array main breaker here. The PV from the array is coming up in here on the up of the breaker. This is plus, this is minus, and this is the output here to the inverter. If we take measurements here, we will see here on the up. At the moment we have 119.1 volts coming in from the array. And this will of course also come out on the down 119.1. So if we now uh, open this breaker, so the array is deactivated, no input to the inverter. The inverter is now also showing that there is no PV input. We have on the up again the input from the array still 119.2 now. And on the down, what's showing there? There we have 4.1 volts. So 4.1 volts means at the moment there is no real back feed coming from the inverter. The PV input there is actually non-existent. So let's take a measurement towards ground plus towards ground. Interestingly here we have a higher voltage. It is showing minus 15 volts there and minus towards ground is actually showing even more than that. It's minus 20 volts. Very interesting how this could be like this. So we don't know it yet, but we have a better tool to check on this.
to see that a voltage potential which you can measure by a multimeter is true or not you actually need a different sort of meter and it would be something like this what is this this is a voltage continuancy meter it's a multimeter which has a special feature it has two buttons here when you press these two buttons here it's also indicated by the LED that those buttons are pressed we have a cable here connecting these two parts from this meter and when you press those two buttons we will have a continuancy between this pin and this pin over a resistance which is kind of similar to the resistance a human body would have and by pressing this you, you can simulate a load a small load on the circuit and that small load will draw away every sort of voltage which is just a relict of capacity for inductive influences so while the multimeter will show us a voltage potential this meter can actually eliminate those false readings let's use the voltage continuity meter so this is the expert tool the tool for electricians to check about isolation and stuff like that if a circuit is just showing some uh, nuance voltages or if this is real what you see so here on the up again this is not a digital one we are having indications by leds but we we can see it's dc because ac is not lit dc and range 120 volts if we do the same on the down here yeah it's only showing that there is some power potential but you can see no voltage is shown so this is uh, similar to what we have seen before but what you can do now with this meter is you can press these two buttons here simultaneously and then the measurement is done via a resistor and that will draw down all voltages which are just capacity for inductive and not real right so let's do this and yeah in this case because there was nothing visual there is similar to the other measurement so now let's make a measurement towards ground and yeah the meter changed to ac so it is seeing some ac but we do not have any indications here i can also press the button so we have contingency but there is no potential shown on this let's take the other one here we just briefly saw 12 volts and now it's gone again press the button so also here similar no potential on this one we can actually test now the, the PV area if the isolation there is still uh, okay so we are still uh, off here on this breaker so the inverter is disconnected let's check the input so I told you my PV area there is isolated there is no connection anywhere to ground via a power line not via the plus not via the minus so if there is a voltage towards ground then this can only be because a panel is defect and there is a leakage somewhere right or maybe a cable loose whatever so let's test here so the meter is showing us 120 volts ac is not lit so it's dc if we are pressing these two buttons what will happen we are adding a load and you can see the indication dropped a little bit 
but this is only because 120 that's a sort of step there and we are exactly at that voltage level so it's dropped down to the next one but you can see the voltage is still persisting it will stay there so we have a power source here and if you check now towards ground which is here so now you initially saw we had a voltage potential here on the plus but it went down why did it go down because we actually equalized now the plus pole towards the ground potential so we have drawn it down it's like making a connection so i don't even need to press these two buttons anymore it already equalized so if i go now to the minus pole we will see again a voltage you see full voltage there but it also now going down back down again right this is also now because the isolation is still intact of the pv array and now we have done nothing different than drawn down the minus pole to the ground potential and also i don't need to press these two buttons anymore because the meter did it by itself because there is still meter a meter is also a small load of course right but i can i can repeat this again and again now we have the potential on the plus as you can see and it will go down here and be equalized to ground level again i can do this very quickly go here press the buttons and potential is gone so and now by pressing the buttons and no voltage is building up we can tell that the isolation of the pv array is fully intact what is the conclusion of our measurement on this inverter this inverter this is a quite early uh, model of all-in-one inverters it has the 150 volt pv input and if you would open up this inverter you would see a row of transformers inside those kind of transformers which you will find in any power device electronic power device they are called high frequency transformers and they are breaching the ac and dc side so they separate ac and dc side this is a separated isolated a transformer based design here so you will not see the problems which will was explaining but other more modern devices they will have that problem because especially if you can find it in the description of the transformer and then stating there that this is transformer less then you will have a reading on your measurement on your meter also when you're pressing the two uh, buttons which are connecting the power source via a load so yeah that's all what i can show you and tell you of course when you're working on an electrical system on a power source always shut it down before you work on it be aware of what kind of system you have keep your isolation where you can read the manual always try to be on top of the topic be informed and you will be well okay so thank you for watching this video please comment on the down what are your experiences with this did your setup confuse you sometime because you are reading voltages where you wouldn't expect it thank you for watching please like the video and i see you next time